Welcome everyone. Would you stand to your feet tonight? The word of God says in Psalms 100 to make a joyful noise, all ye lands. Can anybody make a joyful noise tonight? It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Are you ready to sing? All right. Praise the Lord. Come on and put your hands together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all. shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Say, 
Jesus, I sing. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Come on, you can give him some more praise. Come on, do it a little bit louder. Are you thankful that he died on the cross for you tonight? Are you thankful that he died for you? Come on, shout it out. Somebody better testify in this place. worship you Lord listen the word of God says that if we don't worship him the stones will worship him amen so we're gonna worship him tonight amen we worship you Lord we give you glory and honor our prayer tonight is that you open our eyes so that we can see you clearly father God it up. Every voice. Come on. What a God. What a Savior. Yes, 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 yes. 
Jesus, yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place here tonight. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for your amazing grace, for your patience, your love, your faithfulness. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity here tonight to be able to come together and lift up your name. Thank you for covering us and protecting us to bringing us here tonight. For many of us know if it wasn't for your grace, we wouldn't be here tonight. And we come with great thanksgiving in our hearts. Great thanksgiving. Great thanksgiving in our hearts for waking us up this morning. Being patient with us. Being faithful to us when we were not faithful. We love you. We bless your name in this place. And tonight, not one of us to walk out the same way we came in. Not one of us to leave this place the same way we came in. Touch, heal, deliver, set free, turnarounds, breakthroughs, miracles for your glory. Miracles for your glory. Miracles for your glory. Touch, heal, restore, fill up, strengthen, encourage. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to, to the Trauma Center Saturday night. Uh, uh, a place of victory. Amen. I said, This is a place of victory. Woo! Praise the Lord. We could just we could just stop right there. We can just we can just like not say another word, and you've already received something that is priceless, and that is this: that you're here tonight, which means you can't be anywhere else doing something you shouldn't be doing. Amen. Amen. You're not where you used to be. Tomorrow's not here. Right here, right now, victory. Amen. Shout, I got the victory. Amen. Got the victory. Let me just, let me just read something that, I, that, that was sent to me. And I believe this is uh, for us here tonight and watching at home. And everybody that's watching at home or wherever you might be watching from, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Um, um, here's a word. Are you ready for the word? Shout, shout, I, I, I'm ready for the word. The Father says today, I have not set you on the shelf to gather dust and go to waste. Rather, I have saved the best for last. Just as in the wedding feast with the miracle of the water turned into wine, it was declared that the best was saved for last. Amen. That was the first miracle that Jesus did um, was at the wedding at, at Cana. Even as you have faithfully served me in years past and have now felt the autonomy of a sense of completion, you have not finished the race that is set before you. Amen. Not yet, beloved. There is more to be done, and there are further days and years of ministry portion still ahead. Amen. So dust yourself off and get ready. Shout, I receive that. Just go like this. Just go like this. You're not ready. If you guys were really ready and you were receiving that word, you would have stood to your feet and you would have just... Moved. One, two, three people. That's it. There's no reason for me to go any further. Only four people stood after what I just said. Amen. Come on. Woo! 
come on now, stand to your feet. Come on now, hallelujah. Under this anointing, as this word goes forth, amen. And shake yourself off and dust yourself off. And shout, my best days are ahead. My best days are ahead. My greatest days are ahead. My greatest chapter is ahead. In Jesus' name. Now shout yes. All right. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So dust yourself off and get ready. Don't get ready by sitting down and going, yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> A soldier rises up. You don't go into battle sitting down. Saying, oh, there's the enemy and there's the land we're supposed to possess and that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, all right. You rise up. Amen. Put on your armor. You prepare yourself. Dust yourself off. And you move forward. With a shout. Woo! With a shout. Woo! With an attitude of gratitude. God's with me. God has given me this land. This is my purpose. This is God's plan. And God's with me. And I'm going in to possess. The physical precedes the spiritual. The physical precedes the spiritual. The first Adam, Old Testament. The second Adam, Jesus, spiritual. Amen. The physical precedes the spiritual. So you got to have a little bit when you come in or you get ready to do something. The physical, that's why sometimes someone sometimes will, will sing some songs and some people will say, well, that, you know, I don't, I mean, is that really, I mean, people are just kind of like, you know, jumping up and down and, you know, some of the fun songs we do. I, 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 I and, and, and it's like, well, you know, where's the, the worship and where's the whole, you know, the, you know, when we're just having fun sometimes. And I go, the physical precedes the spiritual. That, it takes that to start us to get us in. And it's okay to have fun in church. So if a song that is fun helps us get from the physical, from the weak and all the craziness, a, a shout and a jump. To, to dust some stuff off, to shake some stuff off. So then as we go forward, we press in into the spiritual. Amen? Amen. God hasn't called us to hide behind the shield of faith and wait for the rapture to come. Or go run to the mountains. I'm saved. I love Jesus. It's about the hurting, the lost, the afflicted, addicted, and the lost, and the poor. And we're shut down and up in some mountain <laughs> while people are dying and going to hell every day. Mm -hmm. We are the solution. We have the answer. There's work to be done. And guess what? It's harvest time. Amen? And I'm not talking about some people right now with the, with the, with the virus and everything that's going on that have... I, I, and I get it, that, that, that have some issues that they're dealing with, you know? So there's got to be some wisdom there. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about people that are, that, that, that are strong and healthy and you've allowed the spirit, and I say this gently, I say it with a lot of love, but come on, amen. You've allowed the spirit of fear to paralyze you and shut your mouth and shut your voice and shut your purpose and shut your destiny, amen. This is the hour for the church to rise up, to speak to be heard, to stand to be seen, and there's work to be done. And he's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the author and finisher of our faith. I've said this before. The virus will not have the final say in our lives. Jesus is going to have the final say in our lives. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? And perfect love casts out all fear. What am I trying to say? If you're where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, God will cover you. God will protect you. And God's going to have the final say. And you will depart this earth when your assignment is over. 
We still use wisdom, the knowledge that God's given us, and we still apply things and wisdom, like I said. And if you're where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing for his kingdom, in his will, I've said this before, you can be in the most dangerous place, and that's the safest place. If that's where God's called you to. You can be in the safest place from the natural and from a world's point of view and be in the most dangerous because God hasn't called you there. Are you with me? There's work to be done. It's harvest time. And it's time for us to get busy because people are looking for answers and we have the answer. Amen? Now, where are my soldiers at tonight? Amen? Amen. And I'll tell you, when you're focused on doing the work of the Lord, and you're about the kingdom of God, and you're about the work of the Lord, and you're about the cause of why Jesus came, he came to find that which was lost. If your focus is that, and that, that's your focus every day, your, fo your, your focus your, will become your, your, your destination. So if I'm focused on doing the work of the Lord every day, then I can't, because a house divided can't stand. So if I'm all in about the kingdom and doing his will and being where I'm supposed to be, then I can't be where I'm not supposed to be. I can't be doing what I'm not supposed to be doing because I'm engaged and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, and, and I, and I'm doing the will of God. I'm about bringing encouragement and hope and, and, and praying for people and encouraging people and praying for people. Amen? That's another way that you protect your victory when you come out of something. Be about the kingdom. Be busy about the kingdom. Just like we were busy about the things we used to do. You know what I'm talking about. I, mean, I don't think everybody knows what I'm talking about. Do you, do you remember how busy we were during the day? Because we were trying to get something. And that was our focus. And we did whatever we needed to do to get that. And like I said before, even when it was on the other side of town. And you had no car. No license, no bike, no money, <laughs> but somehow, some way, you found your way to the other side of town, and between point A and point B, you found a way to get to the other side of town, even though it might have taken all day to get there, and somewhere along the line, you even picked up a little bit of, of, of some change and some money, and, and you got what you wanted. Because that was your focus. You were all in about that. And that was destroying our lives. Yeah. How much more when we're all in for the one that saved us, delivered us, set us free, yeah. pulled us out of the pit of hell and into the kingdom of heaven, covered us, protected us. When we were in our mess, he still covered us and helped us get to this place here tonight. How much more when we're all in with the heart of God for the people he died for? That'll keep you out of some trouble. And that'll keep you in good trouble. I said that'll keep you out of some trouble and that'll keep you in good trouble. Okay, I feel like I can go on now. Amen. Let me finish this word. I, there's a second paragraph. That was only the first paragraph to this word. So dust yourself off and get ready. Shout, I'm ready. I'm ready. I have saved the best for last in your case. I have called you into this very hour with a purpose and a great destiny. What has been accomplished in the past has been ordained. Yes. And fulfilling. Yes. But your destiny is not complete yet. Amen. Oh, God is saying something here to somebody. There is coming a season of fields white unto harvest. Amen. And a great outpouring of my spirit. The plans that I have for you are yet to be fulfilled. Amen. The plans I have will bring you to my expected outcome as you set yourself to walk upon the narrow path. Amen. Shout all in. Your season of miracles and greater works is before you. I receive that. I receive that. Amen. I receive that. 
receive this day the strengthening grace for the journey says the father amen. lift up your hands say i receive it in jesus name, in jesus name. Amen. amen well happy thanksgiving everybody <laughs> amen man that's a word amen. i said that's a word that's a word. It's a great word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, if you're glad to be here, say good amen. 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 Yeah, we got to, we got to, man, anything or anybody that is bringing a report that is contrary to the word of God, you need to start protecting what you're hearing, what you're listening to, what you're watching. And if it ain't truth, which is the word of God, you need to start to protect yourself because it's affecting not just the people of the world that aren't saved, but it's affecting the people that are saved in the church also. That's good, yes. What is God saying in this season? What is God decreeing in this hour? And what he says settles it. We need to believe it, receive it, and move forward amen amen this is the greatest hour to be a Christian this isn't an hour for Christians to be afraid this is an hour for us to be excited this isn't an hour that we add fuel to the fear of what's going on this is an hour that we walk into places or we're on the phone, or we're around friends and family, or whoever it might be, and we're speaking the solution, we're speaking encouragement, we're speaking hope, we're speaking. This is an hour that we show up and we change the atmosphere around us. We change the heaviness, the depression, the hopelessness, and the fear around us. We are carriers of the presence of Almighty God. The same power that raised Jesus from the grave. That resurrection power lives in us. Amen. He's still on his throne. Amen. And he's not a man that he should lie. He's going to have the final say. Yes, he is. And nothing's going to take place until our purpose and our assignment is finished and fulfilled. Yes. We get ourselves into trouble when we take ourselves out of position. Mm. Then we open up the doors to premature things to take place. But even then, God tries to bring us back to position with an urgency. And I feel that tonight. God is saying to some people, get back, get back where, I, get back to my will, get back to my purpose, get back to my ways, because if you stay out here, you're going to have some premature things happen to you. And God says, my grace right now is covering you and protecting you and trying to help you get back Thank you, Lord. to my will, my ways. My purpose for your life. But if we stay outside of his will, we open up the doors and give legal right for that enemy to come in. Look at someone and say, get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Amen. Amen. Did I say welcome to Saturday night service? Praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, just real quickly, let me just do a couple, couple announcements. Could we just real quickly give out these flyers? Um, let's pass these flyers. This is our Christmas outreach, December 12th, Saturday morning. So give out, grab a couple, grab a few. Um, make sure you bring the kids here on December 12th. We have, we're, and, and, but, and then give, it, give these out to somebody um, that has children and kids. And invite them to Saturday night, I mean Saturday morning, December 12th, from 11 to 1 o'clock. We're going to give out Christmas gifts to all the children in our community. 
And um, last year we gave out over a thousand gifts to the children. Um, so we're, we're, so that's kind of like the goal again. We're just kind of changing some things around of how we're going to distribute to them because of everything that's going on. See, but see what I'm saying? I said something earlier, using wisdom. We still use wisdom. You know, so when I'm saying about the virus, I'm not saying being unwise about it or being ignorant about it. So there's wisdom. If you look around the church, there's wisdom. We, 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 when everyone leaves this place, we spray down this whole place. Wipe down this whole place. And then once a week, we fumigate the whole place. Amen. We've been doing it every week. Amen. Majority of people wearing face masks. So we're doing, but, we're, but as we're doing it, we're still moving forward. Amen. Yeah. The doors are open. Amen. And we're still reaching the people. See, do you see the balance? We're still moving forward. We're not allowing fear to dictate our next step. But we're using wisdom to go along with it. So the Christmas outreach, we're going to change some things around as far as how we're going to distribute the gifts. And, and then afterwards, too, as the kids get a Christmas gift, so let them know um, um, every kid's going to get a, a, a gift. And then afterwards, on the way out, we're also going to have a, a food truck here. We're going to give out food boxes to all the families as they're leaving. Amen? Yeah. So sing. Yeah. So we're going to do it on the parking lot out here, and we're going to have music going. And, and anyway, so, so December 12th, let's get the word out. And number two, if you, are, if you want to be part of that and help as a servant um, to help us with that event, um, there's a sign-up sheet in the bookstore. I mean, we've, uh, already many of you have signed up, so thank you. Um, and then next Sunday, not tomorrow, but the following Sunday, right after service, we're going to have a meeting. So the week before it. You know, six days before or five days before, we're going to have a group meeting where we're going to give some more instructions about that day, okay? And if you can't make it for whatever reason, just let us know. And it doesn't mean you still can't help. We'll, 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 we'll make, you know, we'll, we'll, the day of, we'll get you in there somewhere, amen? But it's important, though, if you can, though, to be here for that meeting, not tomorrow, but, it, but, but be here tomorrow, amen? 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, next Sunday, right after service. Tomorrow, by the way, if everything works out, my wife, my wife Sheila, God's put some things on her heart, so she's going to be sharing a little bit tomorrow. Amen? Amen. She's, uh, she wants to encourage everybody, so she'll be sharing tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Um, um, a little bit, or I don't know how long, you know. Uh, well, whatever, whatever she wants to do. Whatever you want to do, praise the Lord, baby. <laughs> whatever you want to. Amen. No, she's awesome. She's awesome. Actually, we were, and I don't mind saying this, we, you know, we, we were at a, um, a, a, an AA meeting yesterday, you know, because she, she's coming up. I'll, 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 she's going to be celebrating um, so many years, and I'm going to let, she'll probably say that tomorrow, so I'll just leave that alone. So anyway, so we went to a meeting last night, you know, because she, you know, she used to go to many of these meetings. They're, they're awesome, actually, you know, yes, and, um, and she, and we're at a smaller meeting, and it's just, um, it's encouraging, you know what I mean, because you hear the stories, and you know you're not alone, and everyone's going through something, and, and just encouraging one another. And, um, and we had an opportunity, and she, she, she um, ended up sharing. And then there was only five of us or six of us, so it came back around. There was still like 20 minutes left, and they came back to Sheila, and they go, do you want to say anything else or something? I forget how it went. So she spoke for another 15 minutes. <laughs> and, man, she just started sharing, and, I mean, everyone was encouraged. Amen. I mean, everyone was encouraged. And then we ended up taking somebody home last night that needed a ride, this one lady. And um, there was really, you know, uh, anyway, we were just able to love on her. And actually, she had been to the church. She goes, fire and water, I know that, but I've been there before. Well, I'm the pastor. I go, praise the Lord. <laughs> and then she goes, well, you know, my, the church I go to, anyway, they don't, they, they don't pick me up. And not, I don't have a vehicle. I go, man, we'll come pick you up. You call, we'll come get you. Amen. Anyway, just, it, was really, it was just really awesome. But she's such an encourager and her story and the victory and what she's overcome. So tomorrow... Um, Whatever God's put on her, and I don't know what she wanted to share. I just go, absolutely. So I know it's going to be really encouraging, okay? So praise God. It's tomorrow. So next Sunday, right after service, we'll have the, a meeting for the outreach. So please just get these out to as the Lord leads to a family with kids and children. And then, um, and then um, and let, the, and let the parents of the family, um, the adults, know that we're going to have food for them also. And we're going to get our Bibles for everybody and information out. So it's going to be an awesome day. And um, so please make yourselves available. Get the word out. And if you want to help, please sign up on the way out. Okay? Praise God. I said praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let's take the offering. For, um, 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 let's take the offering. Are you ready to give? 
Amen. Praise God. And watching at home, thank you for your faithfulness. Um, um, thank you for your faithfulness. Um, now, Zippy, why don't you come and pray for the offering? You want to pray for the offering? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this night. Lord, we thank you for this offering and that this offering is to you, Father God. And we ask that you bless this abundantly and that the motive of the heart be for your kingdom. Lord, there's answered prayers with this giving. So we ask that you bless these prayers. You bless this offering and bless this building that you use for your kingdom. Bless Pastor Gus for his obedience. And we absolutely love you, and we do all these things to glorify who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Well, hold on. So they're waving to me in the back. And Lucy, I know Pastor Robert said Lucy wanted to share something. So, and then Lucy's like, hey, you know, I'm like, so, so I don't think I have a choice here. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So um, make it good. Make it good. Okay. Say something nice about me. Okay. So basically, the pastor appreciation was last uh, month. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor, let's come over here. Okay, and so we all don't... I always say that, that. If you guys have been here before, I always tell anybody that comes up, well, say something nice about me, amen? That was like a joke. And, the, and, and, and they're about to say something nice about me, amen? Okay, so we all pitched in and bought you something. Okay. And we got you a card, and we got you $50 of Olive Garden gift certificate, as well as $40 of Starbucks. <laughs> And you wouldn't know what I went to get this for you. It's just, yeah, open it right now, please. Open it. Open it. <laughs> and we got it engraved. So we had ordered that um, August, I mean, excuse me, October 10th. And it was back ordered till the 23rd oh, of October. Wow. And then it was back ordered till the 26th. And then I was on the phone forever. And then it was going to take another two weeks to get it in. So I had to order you another one. Wow. And then we had to get it engraved. And so finally we got it in. Then you were gone the week we were going to give it. And then I was gone last week. And then finally today. So, so November 28th, you finally get the Pastor Appreciation Bible. And we love you. And we thank you that God has given you as our vessel for us. Okay? Praise God. Lucy, anytime you want to share something, you have the green light. Amen. Thank you. And you know what? You know what's awesome about this? And anyone that knows my, what goes in my office, my Bible that I have is falling apart completely. And it's my original Bible that I've had from, from for, when I first got saved in 94. I've had that Bible and I had it redone. My friend that's in Bali, David, that came and visited not too long ago, he took it uh, like 10 years ago or 12 years ago and redid it for me, and now it's, it's falling apart again. It's just, uh, you know, pages are flying out and everything. So this is awesome, amen? So thank you. Very awesome. Well, praise the Lord, amen? It's large print. It's large print, yeah. Yeah, what? Thank you, Jesus, amen? No. I get up in the morning, I'm trying to read stuff, and I can't, and, it's, and, I'm, and I got these glasses, and, and then my little one gets in everything, so I'm always putting them away where she can't reach them or get to them, so then, so when I do that, then, then it's like, then I wake up, and I'm like looking for where they used to be, but they're in a different place now, you know, it's a whole thing, amen, <laughs> it's a whole thing, it's a whole thing now, amen, amen, so thank you, that's awesome, large print, amen, amen, yeah. are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen. I'm just trying to think. Am I missing any other announcements uh, that are important, right? Huh? Tomorrow, yeah. Monday, we'll be back here. Monday for prayer at 7 o'clock. And then also Wednesday night, life groups will be here Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Okay? Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's, uh, let's stand to our feet and let's just worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. And I just have a couple, just a couple things just to encourage you with. And we'll, we'll be done tonight. Amen. Amen. You were the word at the beginning.
you, just you guys. What a powerful name it is. Come on, raise your hands. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold
man. Say one more time. Yes, I am. I am a child of God. Come on. Full of grace. Yes. yes, I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. No, I am a child of God. Watch this. Watch it. You know, I was thinking about my daughter right now. As we're saying, I am a child of God. Little Gracie, she's about December 12th. She'll be two and a half years old. She's my, she's my, she's my child. She's my child. She's my child. Everything that is connected to me, everything that I have is hers. Well, I just want to make I just want to help somebody right now I want you to understand you are a child of everything I have is hers and she doesn't get leftovers she gets the best I would do anything to protect her. I would do anything to protect her. And when I say anything, I mean anything. I want you to let that sink in. Church in the hood. I love you. God's good. But if you, come, if you look the wrong way at her, we're going to have a problem. I said, we're going to have a problem. No, we're going to have a problem. I am a child of... How much more our God in heaven that sent his son and laid down his life for you and me? I am a child.
seated in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes we sing these songs and we sing them, but are we really understanding what we're saying? Let that sink in. How much more? How much more? Now, you know, with my little one, I just, you know, being a father and just when I, and I was looking at her today where we woke up this morning and we we're all hanging out in the bed and we watched baby movies, baby, baby programs and Anyway, so she came in, and then and then Sheila, and then we made, and we, you know, and then and we we got breakfast, and we're all eating in bed, and and things were getting everywhere, and and I'm just looking at her, and I'm like, man, you know, I'd do anything for her. How much more, our Father in heaven, when you're connected to Him, and you're following Him. He's our provider. He's our protector. He's our everything. And if he's for us, who can be against us? Amen? Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. I just, I, just, I have a, a specific word here tonight just for a couple minutes to encourage somebody and then we're done, okay? Uh, and then we're done. Just a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. Don't, 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 don't. When you keep on saying keep, keep going, that's, that's a dangerous thing to do to me. Amen? Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Watch this. Just watch this. Exodus chapter 3. Just a couple minutes. Watch this. God just wants to encourage somebody. Just, just for yeah, this Thanksgiving weekend. Just because there's people here that are struggling, people that are battling, people that are going through some stuff here tonight. I know it, I know it, and watching at home. And let me just encourage you, amen. Can I just encourage you? Just <clears throat> Exodus chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Now, you got to understand, at this moment and this time, Moses is at the tail end of his 40 years where he fled Egypt. He had taken a life. He, got, he went before God in the flesh and killed somebody. So we can even go on and say he just did 40 years. Follow me. So he, 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 was, he, he, he went in front of God took a life and fled and this is the tail end of 40 years now and God's trying to get a hold of him so uh, could you imagine those 40 years and what he had to deal with 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 um with um the situation that moment and what he did and then he fled fearing for his life he's on the run he's wanted 40 years so 40 years I believe there's a great battle that's raging there. A great battle, yeah. And then, and then and God says, Moses, Moses. And see, he didn't say Moses once. He said Moses twice. He's trying to get his attention. He's trying to get his attention. And Moses said, here I am. Now watch this. He says, do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God. Watch this now. Here it is. I am, not I was. Well, well this is very important because I, I, I am, not I was. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God. He didn't say I was. He says I am the God of Jacob. Oh. I am the God of Jacob 
at this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God because he was struggling here and then as we go a little further God is telling him that I've seen the misery of my people I've heard the cry of the people 400 years of bondage and God is telling Moses I'm calling you I'm going to use you as the senior pastor I'm going to make you the senior pastor of the largest church in the world and I'm going to use you to go back to this place called Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go the same place where you took a life, the same place that you left fear in your life, the same place that you messed up in. I'm sending you to be my voice. Yeah. Yes, Moses, you. Moses. 40 years. Yeah. And he's like, he's probably like, you got the wrong person. Who are you talking about here? I, I, I've been on the run. I missed it. I went in front of you. I was in the flesh. And God's saying to Moses, you're going to be my voice. And I'm going to use you to bring deliverance to my people. And you're going to be my mouthpiece. Mm. Now, what's interesting here is verse 6. Because I think there's a lot to this. And you, there's, there's a lot of revelation here. But verse 6, I believe also... God said to him, because he's trying to get his attention to bring encouragement to him. Because he knew Moses would struggle with this because he was down. Maybe some shame. Anybody dealt with some shame from the past? And past decisions and messes and things we've done. And, and even currently right now, there's a battle with some of us in this place. And God knew the heart of Moses and where he was at. So he was trying to encourage him, trying to help him, trying to reveal to him his character and his love and his mercy and his grace for him. Or let me say it like this. I've saved the best for last. Oh. <laughs> did you see how I did that? Did you see how I brought it together? Did you see how I did that? Did you guys see it? Shall I? We see it. So, so, so watch this. He says, I am, not I was, the father of God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Isn't that interesting? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he finishes with Jacob. He finishes with Jacob. Jacob. So he throws in Jacob in the conversation as he's trying to get his attention and calling him to be his voice to lead the people of Israel out of 400 years of bondage. And here's somebody that's been on the run for 40 years. I don't think it's an accident that Jacob was in the lineup. Jacob, the deceiver. Jacob, the trickster. I am the God of Jacob, not I was. So what he was saying here was when Jacob, and who's Jacob? The story of Jacob. He was the one that stole the birthright from his, from his brother and tricked his father. And he went on the run also. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 through 32, that he had a wrestling match with God. And, and, and finally, he came to a place of surrender because Jacob was, a, let me say it like this. Uh, um, the, the God of Jacob, you are talking about someone who was less than a role model, uh, less than a benchmark, not exactly someone you would hold up as an example for your son to follow or your daughter. But when Jacob was absolutely desperate, he turned to God. He came to the end of himself. And God changed his life. Uh, he, he changed his life. Uh, he changed his life, the God of Jacob, something that gives me hope here tonight and for us here tonight. Because if God could change Jacob's life, he can change yours and mine as well. It was, watch this, and it was the physical touch of, of God that changed Jacob's life. And when God changed his heart, he gave him a new name, Israel. The name born by the nation today. He had a name change. <laughs> 
So watch this. Here we are in Exodus chapter 3. Jacob, let me, okay, let, me, let me say it again. Let me bring it home. Let me bring it home to Fire and Water International Church. Fire and Water, Saturday night service, church in the hood. Jacob was a player. Jacob was a hustler. Jacob was a deceiver. That's what his name meant. But the Bible says that after some years went by, finally, he had an encounter with God. In Genesis chapter 32, and God touches him, and his walk changed. And he went from Jacob, the hustler, to Israel, prince. He had a name change. His life changed. His direction changed. The way he lived changed. The way he talked changed. The way he did changed. So I have to ask the question. In Exodus chapter 3, we're dealing with Moses, who just has been on the run for 40 years, <laughs> and God's trying to get his attention and telling him that I'm going to use you. And then he says to him in the conversation in verse 6, I am, not I was, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Why did he not say the God of Israel? Oh. Why does he say, I am the God of Jacob? He's already had a name change. This is Exodus chapter 3. Jacob was in Genesis. This is Exodus. That was Genesis, and in Genesis, the Bible tells us that he had an name change. His life changed. He wasn't a deceiver anymore. So in Exodus, in the future, from Genesis to Exodus, you would think, you would say, I am the God of Israel. But he said, I am the God of Jacob. I believe. That's where God wants to encourage us here tonight. Because Moses was struggling. Maybe Moses was down. Moses is messed up. Moses has been wandering for 40 years. Moses, 40 years. So he uses the name Jacob because it knew also, I believe, it would connect with him and encourage him. Because what God was saying to him was this. Not I was, but I am. I am the God of the messed up one. I am. I, I, as I was with Jacob, he's referring to him as Jacob, not Israel, with a victory. He's saying when Jacob was in his mess, when Jacob was still hustling, when Jacob was still deceiving and tricking and... I was with him. I didn't give up on him. Ah, I would... Man might have given up. People might have given up. But I was still with him. Man saw him as a trickster and a hustler. I saw him as a prince. Oh, God. I saw Jacob back then in his mess, in his craziness. I didn't see him as people saw him and what people were saying about him and how people were talking about him. God was saying, I saw him as a prince. I saw his future. And when he was in his mess as Jacob, because there's meaning to this, because he refers to Israel as Jacob, because he's already had the name change, and we already know the story, and it's a completed story. Mm. 
the story has been completed there. I, I said the story of Jacob, who went to be Israel, has been completed. We're up to Moses now. But he refers, when God shows up to talk to Moses, I am. Not I was, but I am the God of that crazy, messed up, trickster hustler. While he was hustling and messed up, I didn't give up on him. And I saw the greatness in him. And I saw what I wanted to do in his life. And I was patient with him. Oh, God, someone needs to hear that. And I, and I gave him time to work some things out. I, I, I was faithful when he wasn't faithful. I protected him. I kept him. In all his crazy decisions, in his disobedience, I stayed with him. And I kept him. Because people saw a hustler, I saw a prince. And God's saying here tonight to you, where you're struggling, thinking it's too late, your mess is too great, you've been in it too long, God is not there anymore. God has given up on you. God has sent me tonight to encourage you, to let you know that God has not given up on you. And where you think he's not, that's where he's been the greatest, carrying you, protecting you. In those dark times, in that hotel room, Jacob in that hotel room, Four days of being up. Oh, come on now. Well, you thought you crossed the line and it's too late. God is saying to you tonight, I am the God of Jacob. Shout yes. God, this is a word. Oh, this is a word. I said, this is a word. He didn't say Israel. He said Jacob. Moses was down. And I believe God was trying to encourage him to stop looking back and start looking forward to what God wanted to do in him and through him and how God wanted to use him. What God was trying to say is everything you've been through has prepared you for this moment so you can be a great leader. So you can be a great leader with the right spirit, with humility also. Because your 40 years on the run has taught you also to be, to, 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 has taught you some humility also that you're nothing and I'm everything, but together we're a perfect tent. <laughs> 40 years and your run has gotten some hell out and worked some things out. And now all your liabilities are going to become assets moving forward to help the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost. So he refers to Israel as Jacob before his encounter and his change. Because he wanted to let Moses know and let us know here tonight that when we were in our mess, he was with us. His grace, his mercy, his love, his patience, and his faithfulness, his protection. He was with us. And now that we had our encounter with him, he says, stop looking back. But everything that happened back then is being used for my glory for the future and to help others. Your miracle, your name change is for somebody else's name change. And for some right now, you haven't had that name change yet. For some of you here today, tonight, you've been struggling. You've wanted to give up. 
you feel like you crossed the line you feel like it's too late you feel like you've been a deceiver or you can identify with Jacob and his life for all those years and now it's like man I know God tried to get a hold of me so many times and I and I and I and I still continue doing what I was doing and you feel like it's too late and now here we are Thanksgiving weekend and some of you are even struggling about taking your life the devil is a liar God has sent me here tonight I said God has sent me here tonight to let you know that God hasn't given up on you that God hasn't left you and there's still hope and there's still time for a name change and God took Moses As someone once said it the first 40 years of his life Moses thought he was something the second 40 years of his life he realized that he was nothing and the last 40 years he realized what God can do with a nothing love that I am the God of Jacob not Israel they already had the name change he already had his change so he didn't refer to him with his name of victory he referred to him in his mess letting us know he was right there with him loving him protecting him being patient with him Bringing him to a place called Fire and Water on Saturday night. Man might have given up on you. Friends might have given up on you. Some family might have given up on you. The world around you might have given up on you. But God has sent me to tell you, God is with you. And tonight you have time to allow God to turn your life around Moses took a life and we're reading about him here in the Bible think about that the one that did 40 years is the one that's leading the largest church in the world estimated numbers they, they people have said two three million people that marched out of Egypt let's call it a million some have said two three let's, let's just call it a, a safe number a million Imagine pastoring or having a ministry of a million people. And God uses the person that took a life, that did 40 years. That's the God we serve. And how do we know that he hasn't given up on you? You know why? Because he's given me this word tonight, and you're here tonight. Because you're still breathing, you're still alive, there's still a comma in your sentence, and there's still chapters to be written. If you choose to allow God to touch your heart and give you a name change. It's not the way you start, it's the way you finish. And isn't it kind of interesting? I shared a story, a, a message that I read earlier that was sent to me that with the example and the reference to the wedding at Canaan and the first miracle that Jesus did, changing water into wine, and he saved the best wine for last. He saved the best for last. Lift up your hand and say, that's me. that's me. Do you believe that? Yeah. Stop putting your head down tonight. It'd be different if there was no hope and no word and no encouragement. And, and I'm not, we're not just saying some things here to make us feel a little bit better. This is the truth. This is the word. I'm giving you scripture, the word of God that is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. God is not a man that he should lie. God refers to, 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 to Israel as Jacob when he's speaking to Moses. And he's saying, I am, not I was. Man, I'd be scary if he said, I was. <laughs> like, in other words, he, he, he was a hustler, and it's like, I couldn't, you know, and it's over. I just gave up on him. No, he says, I am. Letting us know he was with him. Stay with him. Yeah. 
He saw the best. He saw his future. And some of you here tonight, you've been in some mess, some craziness for a long time. And God wants to let you know here tonight, he loves you. He brought you to this place, put this service together tonight to let you know there's still time to get this thing right. And there's still time not just to get it right, but for you to finish strong and do something great for his glory. Hey, don't let the devil have the final say in your life. Amen. It doesn't have to be that way here tonight. Don't let the enemy have the final say. The only way he's going to have the final say is if you allow him to have the final say with your actions. Tonight is a night to shut that door to the devil. To shut that door to the past and the craziness and the hustling and the sin and the perversion and the wheeling and the dealing. Are you in this place? It's a night to shut the door, seal it with the blood of Jesus, and rise up and be the man of God that God's called you to be. Be the woman of God that God's called you to be. Be the champion of God that God's called you to be. Be the voice that God's called you to be so we can finish strong together and hear these words. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, shout ya. Everyone stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. And Moses went forth from that word of encouragement, that conversation. And, yes, there's other, and, I, I, and, I, and someone might say that rich in theology and theologically, theological, theologically, theological. And break that down and talk about different things from that verse why God said that and as far as the history and what that meant moving forward into the New Testament but you understand you can read a verse and get a thousand different revelations from it right. see we read the Bible and that's logos the word and then the Holy Spirit brings rhema this is rhema now, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to have a problem here? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just playing. I'm just having fun. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But yeah, that's just, so Moses goes forth after that. Because it was, I really believe when I read it, me personally, I read that story and after God shows up to him, I think there was a struggle, 40 years. I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of things that he was dealing with when he went running. And, man, I should have waited. I shouldn't have gotten in front of God. I shouldn't have taken that person's life. I, maybe I should have done this. And I was trying to do the right thing, but I was the wrong thing. But it was, I was trying to do that. You know what I mean? Could you imagine? I don't, does that, are you the only, am, I, am I the only one that has these battles in my brain? After all these years of ministry, I still have these battles like that. that they, where are my crazies at? There's things I'm like, oh, man. And then God says, stop it. That was then. This is now. Follow me. You know, there's just a point where it's like, you know, stop leaning on your own understanding. Let it go. Trust me with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge me, and I'll direct your paths. It's just, and Moses went forth. But I believe that, I believe there was a lot said there that encouraged him from, the past from others to give him hope that if God did that with Israel who God is referring to as Jacob well maybe God can use me to go back to Egypt and maybe when God's saying I'll be with you maybe he really will be with me and when God says he's going to use me even after all that maybe he can <laughs> and he went forth Ten plagues later, great deliverance takes place. And they marched out of Egypt after 400 years of bondage. God wants to raise you up to be a voice 
in these last days, and he has saved the best for I just want to close with this and do I have the worship team anywhere here or is anybody here is anybody here no okay praise the Lord it's all right so watch this so if that's you here tonight I just want to close in prayer as the words gone forth if that's you and you say that's that was a word for me just lift up your hand. Let me see your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to pray for you. And um, here, just put a, put, 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 just put a worship song on. To put the one on, I'm the God of miracles. Miracles. Okay. 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 It's all right. It's just, just. Amen. Stay focused. Amen. Amen. Watching at home, your altar's right where you're at. I want to first start. Name changes. If you haven't given your heart to Jesus, tonight's your night. Don't play Russian roulette with your eternity. Tomorrow's not guaranteed to nobody. Tonight is the night to get right with him. If you've been in church and you've fallen away, my Jacobs, God wants to let you know he's been with you every step of the way and has brought you to this place tonight to let you know that it's not too late. That this weekend could be a weekend that you'll remember as an altar and say, Thanksgiving weekend 2020, when all hell had broken loose around the world. It was that year on Thanksgiving weekend that I had a name change. And I went forth and became the man of God that God called me to be and the woman of God that God called me to be. You're going to look back to this night as a night of encouragement and hope and faith. That if God can do what he did here tonight, he, he'll be with you next year and two years from now. And no matter what giants you face, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I am the God of Jacob. lift up your hands pray this prayer with me and everybody watching home heavenly father i need you i'm a sinner and i need a savior i believe you sent your son jesus for me to this earth and those who call upon your name shall be saved jesus save me help me wash me with your blood and renew a right spirit within me. I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord and Savior of my life. From this night forth, I'm all yours. I surrender to you as Jacob did and you gave him a new name, Israel, and he finished strong. Lord, do the same for me tonight. I believe you're that good that you love me that much. And I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. And I rise up tonight for your glory. Your will to be done. From this night forth, your will your purpose in my life to reach the world around me in jesus name amen just lift up your hands worship 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 you are here
Lift up your hands. Moving in our midst, I worship you. Come on, come on, come on. I worship Name changes. You. Never to be the same after tonight. There's hope. There's hope tonight. I worship you. I worship you. God loves you. So we call you Lord. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. Ah, come on. My God, that is who you are. Hey. In the darkness, my God. Come on. That is who you are. Hey. You are here, touching every heart. Every heart. I worship you. Saving the best for last. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you.
up in the house. Watch this, watch this. As we finish up tonight, watch this. God is not a respecter of persons. If you call upon him, you follow him, and you surrender, you got to get rid of your way, though. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain, they build it. I feel in my spirit, people are still, there's still a, a battle because you still want to do, you want God, but you still want to do it your way. I feel it right now in the spirit, a stubborn spirit that is listening and hearing tonight and saying, yeah, I know that he's real. I know that he can do this, but you're, there's a stubborn spirit still. You got to let it go. But God won't force himself on you. Watch me. God won't force himself on you. You got to surrender. You got to say, Lord, whatever it takes. you hold on to that stubborn spirit and you don't let go of that and surrender it and give it all to God that's a door that's open and the enemy will have the final say remember what I said earlier when you're in his will protection what he's begun he's gonna bring to completion he's the author and finisher of your faith when you're outside a stubborn spirit takes you outside the will of God Anyway, I'm just saying. You hold on to that stubborn spirit. It's another year of the same stuff. It's crazy, isn't it? Another year, and probably even crazier, more messed up. That's insane, isn't it? gonna let go of that stubborn spirit now I'm still gonna do it my way okay enjoy another miserable year why is everybody all looking at me like oh man some people are looking at me like oh now you're really starting to get into this, my stuff here really let's be straight up right what are we talking about how many more years are you gonna give up how many more months and years are we gonna give the devil this is your night I want to encourage you get connected get in a place of victory get in the word get involved when these doors are open be here get around the right people go in the right direction you got to do your part afterwards just like you did your part to do what you did for the wrong reason you need to do your part now for the right reasons okay John John come up here real quick I'm gonna have we're, we're, we're gonna close it that's all I have that's it are you glad you came you guys are awesome amen it's all good. I said it's all good. God says, I am the God of Jacob. Not I was. It's all good. God's got a great plan for your life. And I believe Moses struggled with that at that one that moment of conversation. But look at what God did. Believe it. There's still time, not just to be get right and delivered and set free and healed, but also to move forward and do something great. Be great. You've been called to greatness, not average. Be great. Be great. I want you to pray um, for our sister and then just close a, a, a prayer of blessing over everybody, okay? I just want to pray for Vicky. He just got news from, from Vicky from our church. So why don't you tell him what's going on? Let's pray in agreement for, 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 for healing and then just pray a blessing over everybody. And, then, and, and let these good people go home. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Vicki Dran is a good sister of ours. She's been struggling with cancer. Uh, she's in the hospital tonight. We're just going to, uh, let's just reach our hands toward the camera. She's watching tonight. Let's just pray and agree to God. We're going to come out of agreement with the, with the facts, with what the doctors are saying, Lord. 
We're going to come in agreement with you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we lift up our sister. Give her strength tonight. Give her courage to continue to fight this fight, Lord. We pray against that spirit of, of death over her life. We pray against that, that cancer, that sickness. We are coming in agreement with the word and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And by your stripes, we are healed, Lord. So we're claiming a healing. And we're just praying for our sister for strength that she can continue this fight, Lord. God, just lift her up tonight. Give her the courage. Give her peace right now, knowing that regardless of what the word is, regardless of what the doctors have to say, the God that you have the final say. God, we just pray the doctors would have the, 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 the wisdom and the knowledge of how to handle the situation, Lord. Sometimes, God, you don't change our situation because you want to change our hearts. So, God, just open her heart to receive what you want to, want to change in her, Father. You're not done with her. You're not done with her yet. We are not letting the devil have the final say. We are rising up. We have mighty men and women of God, and we are claiming healing over our sister. Rise up, sister. Rise up. Claim healing. Receive that victory in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you. God, thank you for these people. Thank you, God, for bringing us here to this moment and this time, Father. Thank you for the word. What an awesome word. Father, help us to receive that. For those that are holding on to something, God, as Pastor said, there's somebody that in his spirit, he feels that may be holding on to something. Let me tell you right now, it's worth it to let it go. We're hanging on to trash. God wants to give you treasure. And again, he wants to use you to change the world around you. It's an amazing feeling to be in his, in his, uh, right in his will. It's not easy. It's not always comfortable, but it's worth it. God wants to use you to change the world around you. As Pastor said, we are the final. We are the end. We are the best for last. This is the end times. There's not much ahead of us, but he wants to use each and every one of us to raise the raise people up and love people back to life. So get on board, lay it down at this altar, whatever you have in your pocket, whatever you have in your heart, whatever you have in your mind that you are trying to hang on to, lay it down and give it up. I pray in Jesus' name that you take, the, take that step tonight because God will change your life. He will dust you up, clean you off, and live lift you up and use you for his glory so we thank you we glorify you in jesus name amen Darkness, my God, that is who.